Alright, so we'll start the actual first chapter. <coughs> Standard internetworking models. Um, as I said before, the first few chapters, it's a lot of memorization. And it's unfortunately, it's a lot of stuff where you're just going to have to memorize it straight up. Um, there, I know there's a lot of little tricks people can use for some of it, but um, yeah. So types of internetworks. Um, Here's a quick listing. Uh, local area networks, the LAN. Uh, you guys should be very familiar with these. Um, the answer's in the name, the local area. Uh, you know, what your computer's directly connected to on the router in most situations. Uh, metropolitan area networks, uh, MANs, they're, um, they're, lar they're larger than a LAN, smaller than a WAN is the best way to put it. A lot of times, like if a, um, a business, they don't really do this so much anymore because uh, WAN technology has increased so much, but you know, eight, ten years ago, whenever uh, you had multiple um, business sites in the same city, they would just set up these satellite connections between the two um, so that you had this, this connection that you know, traveled across, you know, four or five miles. On, on all these, especially like the, um, the, the metropolitan area networks and the, the storage area networks, you really just kind of need to know what they are. Um, you don't really have to know a whole lot about the inner workings or the history. Um, Wide area networks, you guys should know a lot about these already too, especially if you're in the NOC. Um, DSL, T1, you know, basically something connecting you to the public internet in most cases, um, or possibly a, you know, an MPLS VPN environment. Storage area networks, uh, if you guys worked in IT or technology, um, the, the two rooms that they've got over there in the NOC where they've got all of our servers hooked up to storage and all that kind of stuff, that is a SAN, storage area network. You've got all your your hard drives and your servers and all that stuff in, in one place connected. And then uh, VPNs, virtual private networks, a lot of you, you guys should know about these as well. Um, a, a private network uh, to connect, you know, in our case, a lot of individual store franchisees into uh, a headquarters. This one's a big one. You will have to memorize the OSI model. There is no way around not memorizing the OSI model. Um, I had, I'm trying to remember like just at ballpark, I had at least four or five questions just straight up on the OSI model. Uh, and then a lot of other questions that were um, indirectly related to the OSI model on my test. Um, some of the questions you'll get will be, you know, what kind of protocol, you know, that here's a protocol, which layer does it belong to? Or maybe even putting like all the layers in the, the correct order. Um, they always start from the the top up. I actually like to think of it from the, the bottom down because probably because of the environment we work in. But uh, working from the, the bottom down, layer one, physical layer, you know, whatever physical medium you're using to connect um, Ethernet, um, your physical Ethernet cables, not to be confused with the Ethernet and the data link layer. Um, physical Ethernet cables, you know, fiber cables, uh, coaxial cables, uh, that's the physical layer. On top of that, you've got your data link layer. Um, this is, think of this as sync, if you're, especially you guys are working on DSL all the day. DSL sync is layer two data link layer. Um, you know, you connect a, even on like a, a local router, connecting an Ethernet cable and getting a solid link light on that. That's the data link layer. Um, when we get into that, we'll start talking about Ethernet frames. That seems to be the, the big medium in use today. Um, above that, network layer, the IP layer, layer three. Um, once again, most of you guys, especially in the knocker, are, are going to be very familiar with this. That uh, you know covers IP, routing of IP, that kind of thing. Layer four, the transport layer. Um, sits just above IP and uh, can usually be thought of as UDP and TCP, port numbers, that kind of thing. Um, and then above that, you've got your, your session, which um, basically sets up the, the, as it says, sessions of data between uh, two links. Um, above that presentation, um, usually this is like raw file formats for going into presentation, like GIF files, um, JPEGs, those are all part of the presentation layer. And then at the very top, you have your, your application layer, which is, you know, you guys are using a program, something like that. Obviously, that's an application. On the, the left-hand side, you'll see that um, they've got the different uh, data units listed as well. That's going to be something you're going to have to memorize as well. Um, basically, anything in the top three layers is going to be data. Um, when you go down to the bottom, you start with bits, you know, physical, like, you know, surges in electricity, zeros and ones are bits. Um, groups of bits are... are uh, put together into frames, and then frames are put together in packets. Packets are put together in segments. 
and then after that you're all data. Um, so the application layer, um, here's a, a lot of examples, Telnet, HTTPS, HTTP, um, file transfer protocol, trivial file transfer protocol, uh, domain name services, um, simple mail transfer protocol, uh, POP3, email, NFS, NNTP, SNMP, NTP, DHCP, all these guys are application um, on a raw level. Uh, presentation layer, as I said before, this is um, you know the, the actual formats for presenting things, JPEG, uh, ASCII code, uh, TIFF, GIF, PICT, MPEG, MIDI, QuickTime, <coughs> RTF, and RTF is actually um, well, yeah. Well, I was thinking of RTP. I was thinking that was uh, out of place, but no, that's actually correct. Session layer, um, NTP, DHCP, NFS, SQL, SQL databases. All that's part of the the session layer. Uh, all of this stuff, like you guys, don't really have to to memorize per se. But like on a lot of the big ones, like when you you get questions on the test, they're gonna they're gonna be questions that are like. A telnet is belongs to what layer, or JPEG belongs to what layer, and you're going to have to be able to accurately like place those. Or you might have a question where it's like six answers, and you know which of the following three belong to the presentation layer, and you you know you'd have to be able to accurately pick which three of the six answers you know fit into one of these types of formats. Okay, and now we get to the next step. Transport layer, uh, responsible for fault detection, error recovery, establishing, maintaining, and tearing down virtual circuits. Um, you know, TCP and UDP are the big ones. Uh, SPX, I guess, is still in there. Uh, it's kind of less used. Uh, transport layer provides reliable network networking via acknowledgments, sequencing, and flow control. Uh, basically, you know, making sure the, the packets get there uh, in the right order. Um, and as I said already, layer four protocols include TCP and UDP. I'll go into those. I don't know if it's on these slides or if it's later in the chapter. I know we're going to go pretty in depth on TCP and UDP. Um, what's what's included in those and um, that kind of thing. Network layer, the IP layer, uh, controls routing of data. Protocols include <coughs> IP, uh, IPX, which is not heavily used anymore. I, I don't know that I had any questions involving IPX on the test. Apple Talk uh, DDP, I doubt I had any questions on that either. You really just th need to think of this as the IP layer. That's uh, pretty much what it is. Um, there are two types of, of packets. Data packets, which is the actual information that's that's being sent out, and then route update packets, which uh, sends the, the routes to neighboring routers. So when you, you hear a question like a, a routed protocol versus a routing protocol, um, we'll get into that later. A routing protocol would be like you know RIP or OSPF or BGP, and a routed protocol would be basically anything else you've seen above this, IP, TCP, UDP, etc. 